Hey everyone, it's Abby from Abby Road Creations, and today I wanted to show you guys how to make these super cute and easy crystal bead rings. And the only thing I should warn you guys about is that these are addictive. Once you make one, you'll be making them for everyone you know. These make great Christmas presents. You can make one to match your outfit just before a night out. They are that easy. So to get started, you will need a ring mandrel. Um, you can try to do this without one. I do have a video showing that using a marker, but I do encourage you guys to invest in a ring mandrel. It makes your life so much easier. Um, my top pick is a still ring mandrel that is smooth. It's marked and has its sizes, but there's no grooves that can... Um, hurt your wire and damage it. The reason I like this is because it's completely round. Most of you guys will have this one, which I also use and I'll show you guys later why. But the problem with this ring mandrel is it's flat on the back, which means that you are either going to have a weird shaped ring or you're gonna put your bead here, which is what a lot of people tell you to do. And then you're gonna realize that the size is a whole size off at the end. So if you are just making rings for yourself or for your family members and stuff, this is okay. I figured out a way to show you guys how to make rings using it. If you are making rings to sell, if you are getting into a jewelry business type thing, I highly encourage you to please invest in a quality steel ring mandrel. I found this one on Rio Grande and yeah, it's great. But for today's video, I will show you guys how to make a ring using a $5 plastic ring mandrel that I found on Amazon. So to get started for today's tutorial, I will be using a six millimeter, oh, the camera, a six millimeter pink crystal bead. And if you're looking for some beads, I do have these little variety packs in the DIY section of my site. I think this is like a dollar or something like that. Um, I have a lot of the materials that I use in my tutorial videos just to make your life easier so you don't have to spend hours shopping online like I do. <laughs> you will also need your wire cutters. These are my favorite wire cutters. They're only about like $7 or something like that. Maybe $10. i am not sure. But anyways, they're like between $7 to $10. They have a really nice flush edge and a really good point which makes it easier to snip the wire at the end whenever you're making these rings. Other than that, you're just gonna need your normal chain of pliers and an 11 inch piece of 20 gauge or 0.8 millimeter wire. I am using silver plated wire for today's tutorial. You can use copper, gold, anything that you want that is soft and easy to work with. So to get started, we are going to go ahead and pop that bead on the wire to approximately the halfway point. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, there will be a little bit of, of uh, leftover wire at the end, which will make it easier for us to pull on. So once you have it at that point in the middle, what I did is I just bend the wire on both sides to lock that bead in place. So using our plastic ring mandrel, we are going to choose one size bigger than the size that we want. My index finger is a size nine. I'm gonna choose a size 10, and this is just to shape the ring. Because generally, it's one size bigger if you do it this way, but I don't know if that works for every bead type. And also, whenever I was working on this tutorial for you guys, I found out that I really didn't like how this bead kind of sinks in. I wasn't able to properly shape the wire around the ring. So I am doing this step here just to form the round part of the back. And then I'm going to take it off and flip it back over. So at this point, it should be about a nine. I am going to pull on that until it's tight. So that should generally keep the round shape back here. All right. 
right, so that is the size I want. You are going to be pinching for your life here. You see how my fingers are turning white. That is a key step to, to prevent the sizes from slipping away. So if your fingers are hurting, don't worry, that's normal. After a while, you know, what is going on? So to get started, I always start with this top wire. I am going to, I use my thumb to kind of create the curve and to pull that wire around as tightly as I can. Okay, I'll pull it around about halfway. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. It's harder doing this under a camera because usually I am twisting and turning a lot more. So yeah, you're just gonna wanna trace along the outside of the bead. Okay, so that's about halfway over. I'm gonna go back to that first wire I was working with. Work a little bit more on the curve. And then the bottom one. So this is the last part, the, the last little turn that I do. There. So this wire that's on top should be pointing down. The wire that's below should be pointing up. You can see right here, if you count the very back, I have one, two, three. So at this point, we carefully remove the ring from the ring mandrel. Pinching, pinching, pinching. And I'm gonna move my little pinchers to right here. So since we are pulling on this wire, we really want to pinch right here to make sure that we don't pull that wire too far down and distort the design. So with my thumb and index fingers, I am pinching and I am just going to start to curve this wire inside of the ring. Okay, I like to use my thumb right here to push up pull a little bit, okay, pinch with my thumb now there, and then just fold that wire down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the other side. That way I make sure I don't pull too tight here and create an asymmetrical design. So, same story. I'm going to pinch these wires together to make sure I don't pull them down. I'm gently going to curve this wire inside of the ring. I push with my thumb here and pull. All right, so if I like the way that it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and do that step one more time. So I have two right there. I'm gonna switch back to the original side and I'm gonna do that same step one more time so that it's identical on both sides. All right, we are going to take those flush cutters and this is why I really like these. They can really get in close. And look at that, perfect cut. All right, we wanna make sure that that is not gonna be sticking up. So we're going to take our chain nose pliers and very precisely push down. And I still find that to be a bit rough. So what I typically do is try to squeeze in at an angle so that I'm pushing that wire in and it won't be scratchy whenever people are wearing it. 
So we'll do the same thing. Pinch that tight to keep everything in place and then pinch it in. All right, so it looks like we're done, but we do have one more step. This is the final shaping and sizing. So we will put it back on our plastic ring mandrel. And I do this step no matter what, whether I create it with the steel one or with the plastic. I always put it on the plastic one at the end because I feel like it's less harsh on the wire. The steel tends to scratch it a bit more. And I gently just work it down to the size. And the important thing is that we need to use our thumbs to gently push these wires back and into place. Doing so can really affect the final sizing. And once we do that, we see that it is the exact size that we want, a size nine. And there we go, a cute little ring for a night out. Holiday gifts to friends and family. These rings are so much fun to make. So I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions regarding this and I hope you guys have an awesome day.